Hi, welcome to the bathtub. It's the old masturbator, Scott Bradfield. And uh, we're, 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 this is the latest episode. I'm, I'm going to try to do a better job than I did on the last one, the DeLillo Endgame. I'm not Endgame, DeLillo's uh, Great Jones Street. I was just babbling. I haven't done one of these in a couple of weeks. I think my tongue stopped working. This episode is brought to you by On the Planet of Bold Women. This is my new novel. It's very short. You can finish it like basically in, a, in a, two, three bathtubs. It's really quick. And it has no redeeming social value. It's not. It doesn't teach you anything about the world. It just. It just should be kind of a funny book about a guy who, who never quite, who never quite finds happiness until, till late in his later in his life. It takes him a while to find happiness, but he does find happiness. So that might be of interest to you. Today we're we're going to do hopefully again a better job than I did with John Don Lillo. Um, I read a lot of books as usual. I read them and then I, they kind of mount up and then I say, well, I got to do these videos. Um, uh, no, not for any popular acclaim or any any uh, any. Not, there's not a lot of people screaming for me to write do these things, but just because it keeps me out of trouble. Uh, we're going to talk today. It's kind of I don't remember if we have theme music for this, but we do a pulp fiction thing about pulp fiction, and today kind of works as pulp fiction. One of the people we talked about rec uh, in the past year was was uh, the kind of great Edgar Rice Burroughs. Who I never really read as a kid. You really need to read him as a kid. But I've really been enjoying the Pellucidar books in my old age. And I've had friends who love, a lot of people love Edgar Rice Burroughs. And I started reading or rereading a writer I loved as a kid who was big, very influenced. i got to button my shirt up or my wife gets mad. Um, I started rereading uh, a writer I loved as a kid. His name was Philip Jose Farmer. All you, uh, I, I hear a lot from kind of old fart uh, SF geeks from you know the, the when 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 being a geek wasn't you know when we we were pioneers in geekdom my generation we when we were geeks there was nothing popular about it now everybody's geeks it's like really it's cool to be a geek we were just lonely boring souls and, and who, who with no friends who who sat around reading reading lots of crap um, I just reread a book I loved when I was about fifteen it's called the Stone God Awakes Awakens by Philip Jose Farmer. It's a kick. It's really fun. I remember picking this up at the drugstore, you know, when I was like fourteen or fifteen, and just—it's the sort of book that you, almost the first page zips along. It takes place in the far future, millions of years in the future, and it's basically, it basically starts with a guy waking up in this far future world, and people are fighting over him, and you have no idea what's going on. But you follow this story, and it goes off into all these kind of futuristic... If you ever read Commandy, I think Commandy was influenced by this book. Because all, all these future uh, civilizations are all based on kind of animals. So like this, It looks like cats, and there's dogs, and there's leopards. And they've all kind of evolved. Bats. The bats have turned into kind of this attractive man here who flies around. And it's just a kick. I, I don't want... There's a giant tree that has it just basically conquered the earth. And it's a thinking tree, and it's taking over one page after another. And by the time we get to the exposition of how we get into this far future world, you're just totally going with it. And anyway, I I really enjoyed this book, and rereading it, I enjoyed it. It suffers from one of the problems of Philip Jose Farmer, which is he kind of liked to do series. He kind of wanted to be Edgar the Edgar Rice Burroughs, it seems, and to write all these great series. And by the time at the end of the book, it started clearly is leading towards a series. And the, I'd say the last 50, 40, 30, 40 pages kind of gets a little routine. And uh, it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. And he never writes the sequel, I don't think. But uh, I think that's true of many of Philip Jose Farmer's novels, that they they were great I, great stories, and then he kind of, kind of hacked it up a bit near the end. That's my feeling. One of the great fun things about him is... Again, I've got a whole pile of Philip Jose Farmer books here. I'll just give you a little tour. That was that was the book I reread of his recently. He was a big Edgar Rice Burroughs fan. You can see the influence on him of Edgar Rice Burroughs. And he wrote a couple, and, he, and, and of Pulp Fiction in general, he wrote the definitive biography of Lord Greystoke, Tarzan Alive. And this is basically based on all the, it basically tells the biography of, of uh, Tarzan. I don't have him. He also wrote some porn he wrote two porn novels, and I think one of them has it, the two main characters are Tarzan and Doc Savage. I think they have sex in this, these books. I, the Image of the Beast, and then there's another Feast, the Feast Unknown. I think he wrote three of them. Anyway, I don't have the porn, but uh, 
he was really a, really interested in 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 Tarzan. And I haven't read this because I didn't know Tarzan well enough, but I want to read it someday. Um, he also did one on Doc Savage. We started ta- doing Doc Savage in the, in our Pulp Fiction uh, episodes, and I do want to keep reading. Doc Savage is really fun for for the bathtub when you really you know, your brain can't focus on anything but but silly stuff. And this is he did his apocalyptic life, where he does a biography again of Doc Savage. He's a sort of writer who had a great time all all of his life. I remember reading a lot of these books I read as a kid. I just vaguely remember them. This was a good collection of stories. He was known for writing about sex, alien sex, and sex with aliens and aliens, um, their, the way they the way they reproduce. And one of his first stories, I think it's in here. I can't remember the title of it. I want to say it was called My Sister's Brother, I think. Anyway, um, this and the alley, the alley God, I think it's called the alley God. It's about a caveman who, who somehow survive, who somehow comes to modern culture, modern, the modern world. And he, this, this caveman lives in the modern world. I did a riff on the idea of a modern caveman based on that story called Mankind Through the Ages once. Time's Last Gift, I don't remember that very much, except I see, I think Tarzan shows up a lot in his books. He was an interesting character because he liked to do riffs on famous books. This is called The Other Log of Phileas Fogg. This is one I never read either. I think this is, it's basically, Phileas Fogg is the main character in Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days. And I think it's basically tells, retell, it says what really happened in the, uh, in the 80 Days and it has to do with aliens and alien battles or something like that. Many of you will know Philip Jose Farmer who don't know they know Philip Jose Farmer because he once wrote Venus on the Half Shell under the name of Kilgore Trout. And I'd imagine that's his fake photo on the back. Kilgore Trout. I can't remember if he got Vonnegut's uh, 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 permission to do this. Kilgore Trout, as we've talked about, the name was clearly based on Theodore Sturgeon. And I know when I knew Ted Sturgeon, he would, used to go around. And, I remember he, he used to go around and give talks about Kilgore Trout with, with Vonnegut's permission, I believe. But anyway, this I have never read this either. But a lot of people, when that when it came out, thought it was Vonnegut writing under the name Kilgore Trout. And Kilgore Trout was the great science fiction writer, or the really hack science fiction writer, in many Vonnegut novels, including uh, Slaughterhouse Five. What else have we got here? I got a lot. Here's a, here's the book he's most famous for. To your scattered bodies go. It's it's called the River World series. This is another book I haven't I haven't read it since I was fifteen. I read this overnight. I just did stayed up all night reading it. It was so much fun. The premise is that everybody who lives dies and goes to live on this planet called River World. It's a huge giant planet where every human being who ever lived lives there, and they wake up in the morning and there's there's lunch boxes hanging from trees, and you don't really know how this has happened. But this is told Richard Burton. Sir Richard Burton, the famous British explorer, is the main character in this volume. The second volume, The Fabulous Riverboat, the central character, is Mark Twain. I don't think I ever finished this one. I had the feeling that, as I recall, I really loved the first one, and I felt the second one kind of got a little, it kind of went on too long. Some of the short stories are great. I remember, re- I remember reading all these short stories in Down the Black Gang and really loving those. I liked the short stories a lot. This is one of the interesting parts. I mean, only only Philip is a farmer. You, you know the old Ace Doubles. This is Lord of the Trees. It's his version of Tar, Tarzan and Doc Savage. Tarzan is on one side, and Doc Savage is on the other. They're kind of they're pastiches of of those those uh, those pulp characters, and then the two novels kind of coincide. They kind of in, in, intersect, in, and so it's kind of the first time anyone wrote a wrote an ace double as a single novel. It's a kind of a brilliant, only only he could have done. Look at that beautiful cover. The Green Odyssey. I vaguely remember reading this, and again, this this was a real fun one. And it had to do with some some planet covered in grass. And, and basically people sail through the grass. And the whole world is this really thick grass. And it, it has a lot more. It's very, if you like Jack Vance, we really want to take Jack Vance into the bathtub soon. One of my favorite uh, of the science fiction writers I read when I was like a teenager. Um, this this has a lot of fancy and elements to to it. Anyway, that's that's a quite a good one if you haven't read that one. Um, Father to the Stars. 
I guess I, I'm just taking a wild guess that the farmer was a Catholic because it, it, it's a Catholic priest who goes around the world, goes around the universe and getting involved with uh, alien cultures and, and being a Catholic, being a Catholic priest. And if, there's a famous story called Night of Light. I remember loving as a kid. Night of Light is he, Father John Carmody. Carmody. And he goes to uh, this planet where every year everybody, some hallucinogenic gas just drives everyone on this planet crazy. And everyone acts, goes nuts. And that's supposed to be. That, that's a quite a good book. I've never read the Day World series. I picked that up wanting to read that someday. I'm going to say one or two more ones I haven't. I have never read this one either. The Wind Wails of Ishmael. It's a science fiction novel about Ishmael after Moby Dick ends. That's kind of, it's, you know, he's having some fun. I don't have, I've heard good ones. I just bought this recently. The Unreasoning Mask is a late, uh, late one. Um, here's, he did his own, again, another riff on Tarzan, Haydon of Ancient Opar. I think Opar's from the Tarzan books. The one book I don't have here, I wanted to talk about. Oh, what was it? Anyway, there's, oh, there's a he did Barnstormer and Oz. I can't find that. I I read the Barnstormer Stormer and Oz not long ago. It's his version of the Oz books, and that's a kick too. It starts. It's it's uh, it's 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 they're both they're a mix of pastiche and this kind of send ups of these these great great uh, en enjoyable and enduring. Uh, fantasy novels and science fiction novels. Okay, there, I know there's one other. Oh, I know what I want to talk about because I forgot to bring them out. This is a really well. I'm so proud of my. I'm very proud of how well we. This show moves along at a snail's clip. The Maker of Universes, I believe, is the first volume. It's it's about. It's about a professor, an old man, who goes into a house and he finds a horn or something and he gets transported to some other universe. It's called the World of Tears series. And this is another book I read when I was a teenager. And I read the first three books of this series just click, 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 like over a few days. They're really great fun. And the premise was that you... That, again, it's a, a tear, so there's a, there's a, be a planet, and then there's a wall, and it leads... So that's like a stairway of universes. And these characters have to journey through them, and I can't I can't remember anything more than that except it's a lot of fun. That's the first one, Maker of Universes. Again, the old digest size, cool covers, the Gates of Creation, and then I remember that series. Uh, Private Cosmos was good, but then the series starts to lose a little focus. I thought, and he's he wrote three or four books like the Lavalite World, which I have, and and uh, Behind the Walls of Terra, which is another one. Anyway, uh, there's a there's a lot of books there to keep you busy. If you want to look, read, go read just some silly, silly adventure stuff with a with an intelligence behind it, with a real and a, and a great a great affection for the for the history of pulp fiction and pulp literature, then uh, Philip Jose Farmer may be your guy. And the one I really enjoyed and I would sort of recommend is the first, the first book to try, is, the Stone God Awakens. There it is, with that weird looking guy. I remember picking that up. I was 14, picked up at a drugstore, went home, couldn't put it down. And I, and I sort of felt almost the same way last week when I reread it. Stay safe. I hope I was a little, make a little bit more sense than I normally do or did, did in the last one. And we'll uh, talk to you soon.